Hi everybody, Evan here. Um, I've received a couple of questions from a number of you regarding problems relating to the replicas or how to solve certain issues that you're running into. So I thought I would walk you through a couple of strategies for troubleshooting your own problems, which should always be your number one step. It should be the first thing that you do before you ask me um, and before you do research, before you Google or go to W3 schools. Okay, so here we have the Codify Google replica on the right, and we have a replica that I'm in the process of building on the left. Now, if I'm here and I'm stuck, I'm not sure what's wrong. I don't, I, I can't figure out why my buttons and, and this input search bar isn't working correctly or why these links on the bottom are wrong. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my inspector in both pages, okay? Open up my inspector, open up my inspector. Now I'm going to try to isolate the elements that are clearly off in some way. So I'm going to hit, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to hit this little button here, the square with the arrow inside it. When that turns blue, I can now highlight individual elements of my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight uh, the element that looks off. So how about this input bar? I'm gonna, I've highlighted the input bar and here in my elements tab I see it's selected and here in the styles tab next to it I can see some of the styles that are applied to it and if I want I can turn these on and off see how it changes things um, see if any of that is making a difference if maybe I inserted something extra in here and if I turn it off will it suddenly look like the original? No. So that's probably not the issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the same corresponding element in the original page, the input. Input, input, both highlighted. I'm going to look at the CSS that is applied to that element. Now, looking at it, all of the styles look exactly the same. So that's probably not the issue. I see up here that the original uses div.searchbox space input to select this element. Whereas in mine, I used dot search hyphen box space input to select mine. Now, that's probably not the problem, but it's a bit of an alarm bell. It means that I wasn't paying close enough attention when I created my class names. I'm using a class name of dot search hyphen box, of search hyphen box, whereas the original Codify replica uses the class name of search box, all one word, capital B. So that's a problem. It's also using div.searchbox to select that element, which is slightly more specific than just dot search box. So that's an alarm bell for me. Maybe it tells me that I wasn't paying close enough attention when copying down the CSS. But that's probably not the issue we're seeing, so let's move on. What's the next step? It's I don't see the issue here. So I'm going to go to search box, the element that has that that naming inconsistency and the element that contains the input I was just examining. Search box. Let's look for search box. Done. All right. Uh, now, aside from the naming inconsistency, the styles look up almost exactly the same. In the original Google replica, I see here that search box has a width of 100%, whereas in mine, it has a width of 100 pixels. Now that's a huge difference. If I hover over this element, I can see it looks like search box is only actually taking up 100 pixels of width, whereas here it's taking up the entire width of the page. Okay, so that's the difference, that's the problem. Let's see if I change this 100 pixels in live code. There, fixes my problem. That uh, takes a lot off my plate. Things are looking better. Now, Important thing to note, changing your code here in the Styles tab does not actually change your source code. So once I do this and confirm that this is the right way to go, I'm going to have to go into my actual code, find this line, and change it. Now what's helpful is here, it says main.css colon 89. This means that at line 89, this is where I can find this code. Line 89 of main.css. That's super helpful for finding the, the blocks of code you need to change or edit and for isolating problems. Um, how about this next issue? Looks like these this block of links down here is having some kind of issue. So let's target them both.
in the original replica and in my replica and I see some more naming inconsistencies. The original just calls this UL class of left. I called it a class of left site links. That's another alarm bell. I need to be more careful, but maybe that's not the problem. Now opening them up, I see in the original UL class of left has three list items inside it. Three LI elements. Advertising, business, about. In mine, I see three LI elements and an anchor. I see an extra anchor element. Now that definitely shouldn't be there. And let's open this one up and see if we can figure out why that's happening. Here. That's exactly it. It looks like there's a big typo here. I didn't close, I didn't insert a closing bracket here. And this label advertising is not being read correctly. So let's see if I can actually add that in the live code. Okay. That helped, but now we have this extra A here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So it may not work in a live environment. Ah, it's not letting me target that last one. Alright, well the point is, this is obviously the problem. There's a typo here. If I look at my other list items, it looks like I did kind of the same thing. In fact, I did the exact same thing. They all have, oh, this, one's, this one looks correct, the about, that's why it's showing up. And this business looks correct, but I've accidentally got two anchor tags in here in this second list item. And I've got that extra ghost anchor tag in between two list items. This is... This is a big issue, so I need to go back into my HTML and comb through it more carefully to fix this problem. Got to be careful. But that is how you isolate problems that you're seeing in your code. Use the inspector. So let's one last time with the inspector closed. Right click, inspect, select this little square in the top left corner, turns blue, and I can target exactly where I see my problems. Okay. So, that's one use for the inspector. Now, another thing uh, a couple of you have been running into with the Pico site is when you actually run it, you start seeing weird colon, colon, before elements in big letters next to all your icons. Now, that means that you're pulling your code from the wrong place. So, this is the Codify replica of Pico. If you open your inspector, what we're going to see here is our Elements tab, here, styles on the right. Now, it doesn't matter where on your screen this is, if it's on the side uh, or it's on the bottom, it doesn't matter. This is what you're going to see. Understand what the elements tab is, what the styles tab is. Now, this is all live code. You don't want to pull your source code from here. This is what the browser is interpreting. So, what it does, let's go ahead and isolate, select some of these icon elements see this colon colon before? If you're pulling your code from the elements tab, you're liable to type this into your own HTML. And if you do that, the browser's not going to read it correctly. That is because the browser creates this colon colon before element. It's called a pseudo element. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to think about it. It's not something you need to memorize or learn at all at this point. All you need to know is this colon colon before is not in the original code which the developer wrote. So don't copy your code from here. Elements is excellent for isolating individual elements of your page and seeing uh, what happens if I turn off margin. What happens if I take away float. It's great for testing little things like that. What happens if I change the color to red. Well, that, that was an obvious one. But you get the idea. It's great for testing live edits to your code before you actually put them into your source code. If you are going to copy source code, like for these replica projects, you're going to go to the Sources tab, and here on the left you should see a very familiar file structure. It's the one we've been using. It's, it should be what every project folder looks like. We have the project folder, and inside that we have an index file, CSS folder, and inside of that CSS folder, we have main.css.
So if I double click on that index, this is all of the source HTML that the developer wrote. This is the code you should be copying. This is the code you should be pulling from. And if I look closely at these icons, there is no colon colon before, there are no other pseudo elements, there's no equals equals dollar sign zero, there's none of the weird things that might trip you up at this early stage of the game. So that's the index for HTML. If I double click on main.css, I get all of the original CSS. It's much cleaner, it's much more concise, it's easier to read. This is where you should be pulling your code from, the Sources tab. Okay. The other thing you can do from the Sources tab is you can actually see exactly what images the project is using. There's Chris. There's Chris's profile image. If you wanted to use his profile image in your Google replica, you could then right-click on this and save it as whatever, or copy the image URL, whatever you needed to do. And here's the Google image that it's using for this image right here. So you can actually save those same image files from the Sources tab. Okay, so one last time. Open up the inspector, move from Elements to Sources, and here is your code. I'm going to take a look at Index, I'm going to take a look at main.css. This is the code you should be copying. All right. So what I don't expect to see anymore are images of Pico websites that have colon colon before in big letters next to the icons. If it does that, you are in the wrong place and you need to watch this video or check the comments that I've left in the class chat. All right, good luck guys and see you tomorrow.